Jurassic Park 3. So Jurassic Park 3 is the third movie in the Jurassic Park franchise, and it's the only one not directed by Steven Spielberg as of this moment. This movie is where everyone started to think maybe it's starting to lose its edge. Not that people didn't think The Lost World was already pushing it over the edge, but this one really must have set people on that path. This movie is actually directed by Joe Johnston, and you can obviously tell that things are different. It's true, though, Spielberg did have some say in the script, but, well, we'll get to that in a moment. So Jurassic Park 3 takes place four years after The Lost World, ironically, four years after that one came out as well. It came out in 2001. Now, when I first saw this movie, I was still pumped. I was very pumped. I was always a Jurassic Park fan. I still am. And I was very excited to see this in the theaters. I couldn't wait. I thought, oh boy, it's just going to be like old times. Dinosaurs, Dr. Grant, and everything, based on the trailers and the TV teasers. It's going to be a good time. And when I got done seeing the movie, I couldn't help it. I still felt it was a good time. I felt it was awesome. I felt it was nice to be back on the island. But, but then as I got older, I realized, you know... Maybe this wasn't as nice as I thought it would be. Okay, so the plot of the movie starts out with some kid and his father, or what I thought was the father, going parasailing on Isla Sorna, which is now a restricted island. And, well, they get stuck on the island because their boat captains get eaten for some reason. There's never an explanation on who eats them or what eats them. They just, one minute they're there, next minute they're gone. But then they get stuck on the island. And then later on, you see Dr. Alan Grant played once again by Sam Neill talking to some kid, and Dr. Ellie Sutler played by Laura Dern. Now, here's the thing that really bugged me about this movie. They're not together, apparently. You know how in the first movie where it was kind of hinted that the two of them would get together, or they're at least really feeling each other, like they were actually going to be a couple? Well, here, it doesn't exist. Maybe they were a couple at one point, and they did get hook up eventually, but it didn't work out. In any case, they're not a couple because Dr. Sattler is now married to some other guy who's okay. I really wasn't really okay with that when I first saw it. I actually didn't know how I felt about it when I saw it, and now I still don't know how I feel about it. Though, to be fair, in the novelization of Jurassic Park, which I read, there actually wasn't a real relationship. They were just strictly professional people, so... I guess that's where it came from. So anyway, Dr. Grant is just basically living his life is a regular person. He gives a lecture. He gives lectures on dinosaurs and all that stuff. And then, at one point, someone brings up, during a lecture, is it possible he would go fly over East Lasona? To which he says, probably the funniest line in the movie, no force on heaven or earth could get me on that island. Not except a dollar bill, apparently, because later on in the movie, we find out William H. Macy's character decides he wants to have them fly over the island just to look at it. And... He is very hesitant, but eventually decides to because he needs money, and he takes them up on their offer. Naturally, this doesn't go according to plan, because when they land on the island, they hear a huge dinosaur roar, and apparently it's not a T-Rex, it's something bigger. And we're introduced to our newest dinosaur, the Spinosaurus. It looks like a T-Rex, but it's not a T-Rex. It does look a bit bigger, it has a bigger snout, it has arms that are actually useful, and most notably, giant fin. No, I will say, I definitely like the addition of a new dinosaur, but... There's a point in the movie where the T-Rex and the Spinosaurus fight. It was probably billed as one of the biggest moments in the entire movie. But the fight only lasts a couple seconds, and that's pretty much the only reason the T-Rex was there in the first place, to get killed off. And when it gets killed off, it was a pretty bad kill. I mean, it was sweet. I mean, the Spinosaurus just snapped his neck and threw him down. And I remember being in the audience, everyone let out a collective, ooh. Yeah, it was kind of brutal. It was kind of cool. It was short. I mean, there's really no point to put the T-Rex there other than that, if that was all that was going to happen. So later on, you actually find out the Kirby's, William H. Macy's character and Tia Leone's character, aren't there for just to fly around. They're actually there to try and rescue their son who had been gone for eight weeks. Which actually begs the question, it took them eight weeks to actually try and do something. I mean, earlier they said that they called everyone, including the U.S. Embassy, to just let it go. And the Costa Rican military did not denied anything, or wouldn't do anything. But, that's it. The Costa Rican military that doesn't exist in real life, by the way. Naturally, Dr. Grant is unhappy about that. And so, now the point is to get off the island and find the kid. Now, one of my problems with this movie, upon looking at it as an older person, is that from the moment they get on the island, I already had a feeling I knew who was going to die right off the back. I looked at it and I just said, okay, he's dead, he's dead, he's probably going to make it, he's 
going to make it. He's a wild card. It's really not that many people in the entire movie on the island, unlike the last two movies. But, so that pretty much justifies why I feel like, yeah, deaths are predictable in this movie. And as it turned out, that's exactly how it played out. I did mention that Steven Spielberg didn't direct this movie. And I can definitely tell because it feels different to me. It just felt different to me. The island looked different, obviously. It felt different. It didn't have the same adventure qualities that the first two movies had. Now, granted, people hated The Lost World because it wasn't the same. It was a huge step down. But, like I said, for Lost World and Jurassic Park, they had a serious adventure thriller action quality to it. This just seems kind of generic. Kind of thrown together like, okay, plot's simple. I mean, I like a simple plot, but it didn't really wow me like that. There's also the implausibility of the Spinosaurus. I mean, granted, it was a cool dinosaur, but there are some inconsistent things with it. Like, for instance, the dinosaur at one point breaks through a huge gate, and then seconds later can't get through a little hut. A lot of people have probably pointed that out, but I just wanted to point that out, too. There's also the fact that the movie isn't even two hours long. The first two movies were just a little bit over two hours. This one is 90 minutes, a bit over 90 minutes. That's not good enough for me. That's just not fulfilling for me. There's, like, so much material they could have put in there. They probably did, but they had to get rid of it, and that's just disappointing. However, there are some good things in this movie. I think my favorite sequence is the Pteranodon sequence about halfway through. You might already know this, but for the Lost World, there was work, there was a rumor that they were trying to add Pteranodon sequence at the end of the Lost World movie, but they had to scrap it for some reason. But it's nice to see that they put it in this movie, so that's definitely a plus. It definitely m made a huge new threat for everybody on the island. And I really enjoyed that. However, well, at the end of the movie, the Pteranodons are kind of set loose because they didn't close the gate that they were trapped in. So that's probably going to be a bit problematic for other people in the future. Naturally, the Velociraptors is also in this movie, and they're still just as lethal, if not more lethal. Apparently, they're smarter than primates, and they also have feathers this time around, or what look like feathers on their head. Which is different, because they didn't have any in the other two movies, but apparently... In some of the special features on the DVD when I was looking through it, there was some new discovery that Velociraptors may have had feathers on them at some point. So, to its credit, I'll let that one pass. Overall, Jurassic Park 3, I didn't hate it. Actually, I hate none of the Jurassic Park movies. But, to be perfectly honest, if I had to go to my TV right now, pick out a movie out of the three for my Jurassic Park case, Jurassic Park 3 would be the one I would be least likely to pick. Sure, it's a good, decent adventure. Um, sure, it's a follow-up. Sure, there's consistency. It's nice to see Dr. Alan Grant again, but it's just lacking in the overall story department and the adventure theme. And the T-Rex didn't get a good send-off. Is it watchable? Definitely. For that reason, I'm giving it a bronze ribbon rating. So, Jurassic Park 3, you've seen it, I assume, so I'm not even going to ask. If you have, what did you think? Was it the worst part of the series? Are you looking forward to another Jurassic Park movie, namely being Jurassic World? Whatever you think, leave me a comment below. Tell me how you feel. Also, don't forget to check out my Twitter at Asteroid Mike. Don't forget to check out my blog. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you do, just click on the link below or on the next page. And as always, I will see you around.